Bollywood. A multi-million dollar enterprise was rocked by Me Too scandals in 2018. It created some kind of a tectonic wave within the set. So I'm getting retweeted like crazy. He was touching me, touching himself. It was unbelievable. That was the feeling that I'm dead. The industry produces more than a thousand films a year. The films are watched by three billion people around the world and are loved for their song and dance sequences, emotional storylines and larger-than-life narratives. There is resistance to change. So has anything changed in the last five years? <laughs> it's hard to break things in one shot. Sort of unbutton your pants, ride her dress up, okay. and with one hand you're holding a mid bag. The action is just one thrust of insertion implied. So you just have to These are professionals who are simulating an intimate scene. The choreography will be filmed with actors for a forthcoming Bollywood movie. Their role is rather new to Bollywood. They are intimacy coordinators. It is a department that deals with very vulnerable scenes. So there are scenes that put performers in extremely um, sensitive spaces. Many Bollywood actors say they have felt violated while filming intimate scenes. These professionals help set ground rules for consent and safety during filming. This is one of the changes that is slowly making its way into mainstream Bollywood films because of what happened five years ago. In late 2018, Bollywood was rocked by allegations of Me Too against several prominent producers, directors, actors and celebrities. This was after a former Miss India and actor Tanushri Datta accused her co-actor Nana Patekar of sexually assaulting her during filming of a song on the sets of a movie. Journalist Janice Sequeira was there and witnessed what took place. I realized that this is something that had happened more than a decade ago and I was the journalist who was on that set and I could possibly be among a handful of people who could corroborate the story. She took the story to Twitter, now called X, where it spread like wildfire. Like I put together a series of tweets and tweeted it out in the world not knowing what was going to follow. Um, I remember in less than a few minutes actually started getting retweeted like crazy then the me too movement took a life of life of its own right for a few days that's all it was like every day there was either a film personality or someone from a different industry or comedians actors everyone was being called out <laughs> Sona Mahapatra is a prominent playback singer in Bollywood. After the Me Too movement there gained steam, she decided to break her silence. I called out two people, Anu Malik and Kailash Kher. They are big names. One is a music director, composer, somebody who gives work to playback singers. It's a whole system in Bollywood. It's a big uh, part of the music industry. Kailash Kher is a huge, big... Um, music guy himself. This wave of calling out ended some careers, not necessarily of the people who were accused, but of the whistleblowers themselves. The fact that I spoke up was troublesome for them. It created some kind of a tectonic wave within the sets. Like there's so many other men, who knows what will happen. Okay, then, then the backlash I didn't expect that I'll be thrown off the television show. I had this impression that. There's so many women here on this television show. The, you know, some of the, uh, everybody I meet with, top brass from marketing to this thing, they're women. So somebody there, they are going to huddle and say, oh my God, thank goodness somebody is speaking for all of us. But uh, that's not what happened. So they kept it safe and clean. They threw me out of the show. Sona Mahapatra lost some projects, but five years on, she's made a documentary, tours with her band, and has her own music label but she no longer feels she can count on people. 
<laughs> all the men have been rehabilitated and you don't know whether you talk to each other and feel gutted like we did uh, or you go and speak out on social media and say india are you watching like one after the other suhail said sajid khan anu malik everybody is rehabilitated they are being celebrated it's almost like there's no memory of all the accusations or almost like our voices didn't matter and what about us we decide we will work 100 times harder to come back because the punished are uh, the people who spoke up not all was lost the movement did have some repercussions production houses were dissolved streaming giants demanded better compliance and the wave sparked a debate about consent and complicity but so far there have been no convictions and over time the men who were accused received work elsewhere and some even returned more powerful than before so has anything changed for actors still struggling to make their way into the limelight many of the women live in this rather unglamorous part of mumbai informally known as the strugglers colony mona das came here 5 years ago to become a bollywood heroine but she has struggled to find good roles she says it's hard without any connections in the industry and many men in positions of power wanted her for just one thing um they clearly very clearly asked for compro compro is a very short simple sweet term for a one night stand thing and you sleep with me and you will get work they called me for so many times for a, a dinner and then we will just have a good time what do you mean for good time kya matlab bhai ki bhai jab what do you mean until you compromise if you don't open up or don't do bold scenes it won't work ye to tum bold scene nahi karoge jo laga abhi kuch ho karenge hum log living in mumbai is expensive and work is hard to come by Mona and her flatmates try to pick up small roles while they are waiting for their big break. They say they regularly have to deal with predators at the workplace. So, uh, while returning that coordinator was dropping uh, all of the female actors. So I was the one who was dropping at the end. I still have no words. He was like bhai main aise ho gayi ki I was like just stop the car or I'll jump out. Was he touching you? He was touching me. He was touching himself. I was perplexed and didn't know what he wanted. Was it scary for you? Bahut bahut Yes it was very much so. Since then another incident like that has not happened fortunately. But now they ask it beforehand during phone calls. It's so common now that I've accepted that it'll happen. And I have to deal with it and move forward. Me too found expression in mainstream productions signaling change. Alankrita Shivastav writes and directs popular streaming shows so i made a show called bombay begums story of sexual harassment at the workplace and when this one young girl um, you know who's new in the whatever she's very junior in the bank she comes out with her story and nobody wants to believe her but it's a trigger for the older character who's the ceo of the bank that played by pooja uh, bhat the character eventually calls out her perpetrator many years later for me like that story kind of was an exploration of you know when times are different it's very different there is a time where certain things you are just socialized into accepting and you feel like speaking out will get in the way of your life it's hard to uh break things in one shot so i guess it it's a process When Alankrita Srivastav joined Bollywood years ago there were hardly any women around now she's reached a kind of sweet spot in the industry where her work achieves commercial success she's now making space so that more women can be heard one big shift that has definitely happened is that of so many more women on a set 
So I think when there are more women assistant directors, more women assistant cinematographers, then you'll have more women directors and you know, it, that's how it sort of uh, works. So, and you do conscious hiring. Make sure to hire enough women in all like, you know, in various, whether it's as HODs, it's as assistants and all of that. Unprecedented growth of streaming in India has helped lesser told stories find its audience. Their success also means complex storylines with difficult issues like Me Too are a topic. And more nuanced representations of women are making their way to the screen. When there is a safe space and you find solidarity in a collective and you know there are others who have your back, it's easier to speak. Mona has another audition. Here she is doing profile shots in hopes of being picked as an extra in the films. But she's still battling with the same dilemma. I will not compromise. I only have one thing, my talent and my skills, and I want to move ahead with that. But no one wants to see that. Often I do think this is all useless, that I should go back home. Mona's situation and the situation of many before her reflect the power dynamics of the industry. It's about not using your power to make those who are vulnerable feel even more vulnerable and threatened or be used. In this workshop, young actors are learning how to reclaim their power. You can say no from your actions also. I was mind blown because I was like, what? I can have boundaries as an actor? Are you kidding me? Neha Vyas is an actor who helps other actors understand their rights and privileges. She is passionate about this cause because of the sexual harassment she faced in the past when producers asked her for sexual favours in return of work. But the way they just looked at me, I don't think I'll ever forget that. By the virtue of being a producer who's putting money into a film uh, and I don't know what film it was I don't know but it makes you feel so small she works on shifting the power dynamics between actors and producers streaming giants and big production companies hire her in the wake of me too my first port of call is always a conversation with the producer and the director on what is their vision what are the non-negotiables for them then comes in the casting person and letting them know that actors must be aware of these non-negotiables. I try and take a few days uh, at the start of the program to have actors start conversing about agency with themselves. You know, to talk to them that a you know yes and no are not absolutes. I believe that consent is a spectrum. During our filming, we tried to reach out to many men involved in the Me Too allegations, but no one responded to our requests. Varun Grover is a top Bollywood lyricist, screenplay writer and comedian. He is now speaking in public about the allegations for the first time. About the Me Too allegations that were also levelled against you. What was that time like? I was dead. That was the feeling that I am dead. because. Without my voice, felt very unfair initially. As a reporter, an interview with Varun Grover raised complex questions about the debate surrounding Me Too. In 2018, Varun was accused by an anonymous woman of sexual misconduct that she said took place when he was at university two decades ago. Varun says that these allegations are false and says that accusations can sometimes be misused as a tool for retribution. So there will be collateral damage to the movement. There will be people who will either try to misuse it, misuse the movement to, to level you know, uh, false charges like they were leveled against me. Varun speculates he might have been accused in order to intimidate and silence him for other, maybe political reasons. It could be multiple reasons, could be a personal grudge, could be uh, to demean the entire movement or to save themselves who are probably accused of something and then they wanted to muddy up the whole uh, idea that this movement could, could have any meaning. So whatever the reason, Right now, I am the collateral damage. 
and I don't want to be appropriated by people who are opposing the movement. We were unable to independently verify any of the claims made in Varun Grover's case. The person who accused him during the Me Too revelations deleted their social media account and couldn't be located. Truth and justice are matters for the courts to decide. But all the women we spoke to said it is harder and riskier to go public. The question is that who loses their job? And who can you go up against? My point is you could go up against maybe a filmmaker, um, a co-actor who's not reached the stature of a superstar. But can you really go after the superstar who's carrying thousands of crores on him? No, you can't. So has anything changed as a result of Bollywood's Me Too? I believe the Me Too moment worked much better in the West because there were women in the trenches. Over the years, there were so many writers, there were people in the back. People really, you know, who had climbed up the ladder and therefore there was a collective kind of a groundswell. Here, uh, largely, I feel we don't want to turn producers, we don't want to do the hard haul and that's changing. I'm not speaking for it in general. There are many more writers, there are more lyricists, there are more women in the trenches coming up, but not enough. Some uh, token things and some useful things I think definitely did happen. I think the movement per se, I feel didn't amount to much because I think the power structures in the industry are too entrenched and in the US when the Me Too movement, Me Too movement happened, it was a very strong investigation that led up to the Me Too movement and therefore they had a lot of stuff that they could go to court with and all of that. I don't think we had that here. So I think here it just became more like people were being called out and then you know it was like and after that, nothing really came of it. So it's two things. Awareness has caused predators and others to be more careful. Producers are a lot more careful that these things shouldn't happen on their sets. And the ones who were waiting to sort of become your allies and change that conditioning, they're a lot more vocal. They're in a smaller number, but they're also vocal. I feel like change is already happening. Like I feel like there's that wave has started where we're we are starting to care more for people. There is resistance to change. There is resistance to uh, something new. I see it slow, but I see it growing. Studios that are international studios that have experienced usage of intimacy coordinators internationally and are open to the idea of bringing about that change in India as well for their own safety. And what about Mona's dilemma? Will she find an answer? Will she keep trying? Or will she leave? I tell myself that I have to keep working hard. Some people are successful and I heard that they did not compromise. And I believe that's true. So I'll keep going to auditions and hope that one day I'll get a good role. So in that hope, trying to just go ahead.